Hello and welcome back to the series. In today's video I'm gonna find out, is it possible to install Windows XP on a real modern PC? Let's go! This is the second part of Windows XP installation on a modern PC. If you haven't seen the first part, please do it to understand what will happen in this video. All links will be in the description. We have Intel i9, 4900K, Asus Z790H motherboard, NVIDIA RTX 4070, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, and PCI Express 4.0 NVMe SSD with 2 terabytes of capacity. If you were watching the previous video, you should remember that we couldn't control Windows XP because of the lack of PS2 ports on our motherboard. By the way, USB 3.0 drivers weren't working then either. So I decided to solve this problem using the motherboard with the same socket, 1700, which has PS2 ports. And this is Asus Prime H610M motherboard one of the cheapest ASUS modern motherboards today. That's how a modern 2024 Windows XP build looks like. What we have here? We have RTX 4070, Intel i9 14900K, 32GB of DDR5 memory, we have two PS2 ports, a mouse and a keyboard. Also we have very fast USB thumb drive. Using the Venture, I will install the operating system. If you're interested how to build your own fast USB thumb drive, I have the whole video about it. All links will be in the description. Also, we have NVMe SSD. And yes, I will install Windows XP on it. Also, we'll use our media capture card, which will allow us to capture the video signal from our GPU. All we need is to turn on our cringe build on using one of the best screwdrivers on Earth. Here is our bias. As you can see here, I can switch from one HDMI signal to another. To record the video, we'll use OBS. As you can see, it works perfectly. Let's get started. Here, go to the boot menu and select in our super fast USB thumb drive. Of course, in CSM mode. Okay, now let's try the boot using this modern Windows XP image. All detailed guides and old files, including this modern Windows XP image, you can find on my Patreon page. All links will be in the description. Let's go. Okay, now all we need is to press start. Okay, here we must select 32-bit Windows XP image. Of course, you can try to install 64-bit image, but I will install 32-bit system to have less issues. Then click Next, accept the license, Next. As you may notice, it detects NVMe drive, Windows XP on NVMe drive, sounds great. It's selecting NVMe SSD and press Next. And the setup begins. As you can see, the installation is very fast. It's all because we have a fast thumb drive, USB 3.2 ports, and NVMe SSD. Also, please don't rush here. There are a lot of CMD windows will appear. Just wait until it ends. Okay, the installation continues. This is the second stage of installation. Here you must select Windows XP Legacy. Okay, now, as you can see, the image using Snappy Driver Installer. It will try to install almost all drivers. Most important, we will be able to use NVMe drive in Windows XP. That's amazing. Okay, now it will reboot several times. Now you can see the moment where we stuck in the previous video. Our keyboard and mouse weren't working then. The only ways to control the system was to use a PS2 port, which Asus Z790H motherboard didn't have. But now, as you can see, my keyboard and my mouse are working well, so we can continue the installation. Welcome to Windows XP. Go next. Learn how to use the mouse. I think we can skip it. It's strange, but the video output is lagging. Maybe it's because of the lack of video drivers. Next. Type a name. Okay, we did it. Oh my god. So first, let's check system properties. And what we have here. Intel i9 4900K. And we have only 2 gigabytes of RAM. But there is nothing surprising, because it's 32-bit operating system. What about our GPU? Unfortunately, there are no drivers for RTX 4070. And as you can see, our image is lagging. To solve this problem, we will install another GPU called NVIDIA GeForce 8400 GS. As you can see here, there are Windows XP drivers. Unfortunately, for some unknown reason, GPU drivers installation failed. Looks like it happens because of chipset drivers. I even tried to install an old GPU, NVIDIA 6000 800 GS, but we have the same issue. That's why I decided to use another Windows XP image with integrated 
HCI drivers by Fernando, which I was using in a previous video. These image and guides you can also find on my Patreon page, all the links will be in the description. The only issue installing this Windows XP ISO, we won't be able to use NVMe drive. I think we are okay with that, because it's enough to use SATA SSD for Windows XP. And of course we will need a CD-ROM, otherwise we will get 7B error, selecting CD-ROM. Don't forget to press F7 button, otherwise we will get A5 error. A typical Windows XP menu appears. Great, it's working! Pressing Enter button and selecting our SATA SSD disk. Oh, that's better! Let's check system properties. And we have the same picture here. Uh, let's open CPU-Z and we have here 24 cores and 24 threads. The core speed is only 3200. We should have here around 5000 MHz. I don't know why this is happening. Maybe it's because of the lack of chipset drivers. Who knows? But we have 24 cores. So next let's check mainboard panel. And we have the same picture here. Let's check memory. All is uh, the same. Graphics. As you can see, the drivers for NVIDIA GeForce 8400GS were installed successfully. But why then NVIDIA's XP image for modern PC? The drivers were failed to install. I don't know. Once again, maybe it's because of Snappy driver installer. Go next, let's check bench panel. Let's benchmark our CPU. And we have this value. Unfortunately, we can't compare our CPU uh, for some unknown reasons, but I'm sure this value is lower than it will be in Windows 11. Here is the comparison. Go next, let's open Device Manager. Funny, but almost all drivers were installed using Snappy Driver Installer. Even drivers for network card on our motherboard. Looks like it's all because of Realtek. You can use an old driver for modern Realtek network cards. For example, Intel network cards won't work here 100%, believe me. I've tried this several times. Fortunately, we have a sound thanks to HDMI drivers. And you won't believe it. Some chipset drivers were successfully installed for this motherboard from Windows 11 drivers, but except USB drivers. But it's okay because we can use this PCI Express USB adapter. So basically, we can use Windows XP on Intel i9-14900K to the fullest, except maybe the graphics card. Go next, let's connect to the internet. I will use a modern browser called Supermium for Windows XP. We can use YouTube without any problems. It works perfectly. Windows XP on 14900K works extremely fast. Look how fast my computer opens. Just instantly. The browser opens instantly too. I wish my first 2004 PC on Windows XP can work that fast. I wanted to use MSI after burner to see how many FPS we will get. But as you can see, the tuner is not working at all. The error message appears and it asks me to send a report. Okay, now it's time to test the games. Let's try to play GTA Vice City. If you were watching one of my first Windows XP videos, when trying to install Windows XP on Intel i9 9900K, you should remember that game physics were changed. Will the game physics change here too? Let's find out. And yes, as you can see, Tommy can destroy a vehicle. It even burns. It happens because in old games, events depend on FPS amount. That's why Tommy destroys a vehicle faster than usual. Okay, the game is working well. Go next, let's try to play Half-Life 2. One of the best games ever made. And it's working great. I don't see any issues. But we have low FPS. It's even not full HD. Why is this happening? Looks like it's because of GPU. Let's go ahead. Let's play Will Rock. But the error message appears. Init failed. Let's go ahead. Let's try to play Painkiller. Painkiller. And it seems it's working well. You should remember in the previous video about installing Windows XP on Intel i9 9900K, we have this situation. They are shaking. But here, as you can see, we have no issues. The game works properly. Honestly, I don't know why this is happening. Maybe it happens because of additional cores. Who knows? So is it possible to install Windows XP on a modern PC? The answer is yes, it's possible. 
It works even better than on a 9900K. Write in the comments section what next operating system you want me to install. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. See you later.